This is the Visual Aid Supplemental PowerPoint presentation. The idea is if you're needing to create a visual aid for a presentation, you can easily access what is expected from your instructors very quickly in the supplemental PowerPoint. There are numerous types of presentation aids ranging from demonstrations, video clips, PowerPoints, drawings, photographs, so on and so forth. But you need to look at the different types of visual aids and choose the one that would best enhance your material. Some preparation guidelines. The first thing that you'll want to do is think about what your audience would expect to see. So if you're doing a how-to presentation, demonstrations work great because not only are they hearing each stage of the process, but they're able to visually see what's taking place. So if you think about a cooking show on television, this would be a great example because as they're discussing how to bake chicken, you're actually seeing it take place. Um, later on, we'll actually talk about fonts to use, colors, size. But the thing to keep in mind is that oftentimes people rely solely on PowerPoints, and it's not always the best option. And some reasons it tends not to be the best option, people tend to put every word they're going to say on the PowerPoint. And if you think back to a class where your professor, professor lectures solely from the book and basically reads the book to you, how boring that content is. And the same goes for PowerPoints. Um, a good rule of thumb to use is to use keywords. Um, that's the way the audience can easily follow along with what you're saying. But they have to listen to what you're saying because you're elaborating and explaining those keywords. Um, so it enhances the presentation more. Um, think about the placement of your visual aid. Where do you need to place or demonstrate your visual so that the entire audience can see what's taking place? And always remember, less is definitely more. Some guidelines for creating a visual aid. First, you'll want to use block fonts such as Arial, Times New Roman. They're easier to read than some of the fancy, fancy fonts. Use contrasting background and font colors. As an example, you would not want to use bright green as the background color and bright yellow as the font color because the font wouldn't have enough contrast and it would make it hard to see. You would also want to use background and font colors that tend to be pleasing to the eye. Now the font size. Flip charts, posters. You actually need to take out a long yard stick ruler and you'll want to measure three inches and you'll make faint lines for you to follow. You would take your ruler and make guidelines that are straight across the page. This one helps you know what size the content needs to be, but it also keeps it very professional because it's going straight across the page and it's not arching up or down, looking sloppy. Now for computer print sizes, when you're using PowerPoint slides, you can see the font. Handouts, you see the font you need to use. Now we say 14 font, um, 14 point font for your main content, simply because if someone has a hard time reading smaller text, they may not look at the um, the handout. So having the 14 point font is a little larger than normal, but it helps to guarantee that people would be able to see um, the information on the page. And then you see the transparency expectations there. Now when using your visual aid, the first thing you have to keep in mind is that before your speech you need to practice implementing your visual into your speech. 
not only do you need to know the content, but you also have to know when to click to the next slide. You need to know if you're demonstrating something, how you can maintain eye contact but still effectively demonstrate the process out. If you're using technology, a good idea is to bring a backup visual aid. Um, simply, I've had instances where students will come to class and their disk will not read in the computer or it's not formatted correctly. Um, and this can be very stressful to a student. So having some kind of backup, um, if you're using a PowerPoint, if you bring it on a flash drive or a thumb drive, but you've also emailed it to your account, if one of the items doesn't work, you have that backup so you can easily access your visual aid quickly. Only display your visual aid when you're discussing the content. Um, now, people can be a visual aid, so some rules of thumb there. You don't want to wear shirts that tend to have a lot of logos on it because people tend to focus on it. The same thing is if you have a poster up, if there's an image up there, people's attention tends to direct toward that visual aid. So even if you're not discussing it, that's where their attention tends to be. So this is what you need to do. If you're using a poster, bring a blank white poster to cover the material up when you're not discussing it and remove it when you're ready to show the information there. Um, or if you're using a PowerPoint, you can use a blank black slide in between the various visuals. So when you come to a point where there's not a visual needed, it looks on the screen as though nothing is up there. You can move across the room because the light will not shine on you. It's very effective that way. Again, make sure the entire audience can see your visual aid and point to the information when referencing it. It doesn't have to be exactly, but if, as long as you take your hand and you gesture um, to the content or in that direction, people's eyes tend to follow the gesture. So if you're talking about a pie chart and you have a 50% category, 30% and 25, if you move your hand to the 35% or 30%, they will know what you're actually um, discussing. Do not read your visual aid verbatim, and that goes back to why you need to use pictures or keywords um, just to aid or supplement what you're saying. And I like to say, try not to use handouts as a visual aid. I'm going to list three reasons why. The first, if you have information prior to your presentation, people tend to start reading it before you ever need to get there. And so when you start your introduction and you have your catchy attention getter, people are still focused on the visual aid you distributed. So it becomes a distraction. If you pass out your handouts during your speech, um, you've got people passing information, becoming distracted, they sometimes talk, then their attention again goes straight to the visual aid. Um, it's hard to get that attention back. After the speech is over, if you pass out the information, the majority of people do not even look at it. It ends up in the trash can. So it's not effective if people are not paying attention to it. So I like to say, try to avoid using handouts. If you're in a class where the professor wants you to use a handout, you have the guidelines as far as font size to follow. Um, and you would still want to talk about on page three it says, so people can follow the information accordingly. But I feel as though there are more visual aids or better visual aids out there that enhance your presentation without distracting your audience or wasting time. So that wraps up the visual aid PowerPoint presentation. Good luck when preparing your visual aids and good luck implementing them into your speech.